Hi, it's Alan with Bedrock Quartz again. We're going to show you the next step in our process to make a granite countertop, and that's to do the programming for the machines that will cut and shape the granite slabs into the pieces that will make up the countertops. Sid's our programmer here, and she's going to be doing all the manipulation that needs to be done to get us to the end part. So part of the first thing Sid's doing is getting rid of all the extraneous information that doesn't need to be there for the machines. So we're getting rid of all the cabinet lines now, we're getting rid of the dimension lines, we're just getting down to the red outlines that represent the countertop sizes that we want to end up with. Uh, we've now cleaned up most of the, the extraneous information. We've got these uh, down to just the countertop dimensions or the countertop shapes that are left. And uh, the next step that we're going to do is we begin now adjusting the sizes of the countertops to make sure that we can physically install them. For instance, sometimes when you have a countertop that goes wall to wall, we will make it slightly shorter so that it can be installed without gouging the walls. Also, we purposefully place gaps where there will be backsplash so that the bowed wall will not keep a, a visible area at the end of the countertop from being tied against the wall pieces are, the sizes of the pieces are also adjusted, increased in size really, so that we leave a little bit of room for the machine to remove some material and still end up with the proper finished size. So that's uh, what's taking place at this point as Sid is pulling in some of the side walls of the countertop to give it a little bit of gap so that we can install it. That countertop right there is one of those wall-to-wall vanity countertops that we're taking in the sides about a quarter inch per side to give us a little bit of play as we're putting it in. But we leave the countertop tight at the front so where you actually see it when it all is done with the installation it won't make any difference. I just wanted to show you one example with this countertop where you can see the back wall where it says SPL that's the that's a sheetrocked wall that is obviously very bowed. So houses in theory walls are supposed to be straight. In practice, they almost never are. Th never are. This one's uh, fairly extreme. It looks like it's probably out nearly half of an inch. But we make sure that uh, we've got the countertop adjusted to fit that curvy wall. Now we're at a stage that we do a final squaring up of the piece so that we can make sure that we get our joint perpendicular to the finished edge of the countertop. There it is, now it's uh, 90 degrees exactly. Now we're at the stage where we've gone and got the sink opening and we have these digitized in folders for the specific sink. This is a C-Tech uh, LB100. We're taking that sink now and placing it, centering it on the sink center line and also putting it the appropriate setback from the front. And now the faucet holes are being drawn in. This particular sink only gets a single hole faucet, pretty typical. Alright, all of the sizing and adjusting has been done and so these pieces are now their final size for the machines. So we've got the sink holes drawn in for the vanity countertops there, including the faucets. Backsplashes are all there. Um, the kitchen countertop there has the joint drawn into it and the pieces separated for how we're going to build it. We're ready now to move on to the next step of doing the layout, taking these pieces and then nesting them onto the slab that they'll be cut from. All right, now Sid's ready to actually do the layout. So we've got a few of the slabs drawn. Those are the white line rectangles. And then she'll now be taking the various parts and nesting them into the slab, trying to get the best fit. This particular material is called desert brown, and it doesn't have any veining or movement, so it really doesn't matter how we set up the pieces. If this were a piece of material that had a lot of veining or movement, then we, we would be carefully coordinating where the joints went so that the material would flow through the joints. 
But again, this material is a very consistent one, so we can just nest the pieces as best they'll fit. Always continuing on, getting all the splashes nested in to the remaining areas of material. And it's looking like this is fitting in fairly snug. Zoom in on that full. So there now is the kitchen and, in this case, the master bathroom all nested into the slabs that they'll be cut from. The next stage of our process involves doing what's called pathing, where we create the computer code that the machines are going to read to actually cut these pieces. And we do that using a program called AlphaCam. CAM stands for Computer Aided Manufacturing. And that generates the, the language that I mentioned called G-Code. The software allows us to determine whether we're going to cut with the saw part of our machine or the water jet part of our machine. This machine, we just for short call it the saw jet, incorporates a blade to cut the straight lines and uses a water jet to cut the arcs. So what was just done there now, we have the, the multicolored lines represent the, the tool paths that are going to be taken. Uh, the very small red arrows represent water jet cuts and the yellow lines, well actually they're not yellow are they? Orange. Are they? Kind of orange, green, hard to tell on the screen. They are what represents the saw lines. All right, now that this is completed and we've saved the file, we do what's called outputting the code. In that process, uh, we click this one button and it generates a barcode sheet that is used for calling up the program at the machine. And simultaneously, it sends the G code file out to the machine's hard drive for use when it's time to cut it up. And that is the last of the programming for cutting up the material. And now, in the next phase, we're going to show you how we do the pathing for the CNC router. All right, now we're in the same AlphaCam program that has a separate program within it that lets us program for the CNC router. That's our machine that we use to cut sink holes, uh, drill faucet holes, and also to cut and shape edge work where it's arced or angled, anything other than a straight line. Uh, one thing that has to be done here is it has to turn the piece upside down because on the CNC router the piece goes face down on top of what we call vacuum pods. It's all cut upside down. There's a couple different steps involved. We do what's called calibrating the piece on the machine where the piece is, if it's a little bit too thick, we cut the piece down just slightly. So the, the rectangular, the, the outer shape with the lines down the middle represents the area of our table. And then we're able to, she's now putting the tool directions on. That tells the machine which side of the lines that it, it's going to cut on. Now she's selecting the tools and picking which line they're going to run on. Now she's selecting the edge work, and you see those colorful lines with the arrows leading out of the end actually represent the physical tool paths. Now that's drilling the faucet hole. Now as well, setting up the, cutting out the sink hole. And now doing the tool paths. Will you do a 3D simulation on that? This program has a 
pretty neat visualization, visualization, if I can say that right, where you can set it up to show you physically how the program will run. And it'll actually show you where the tools will run, which is what it's doing right now. It goes through each sequence. There's about seven tools to finish an edge. Now it's showing going around the backside, running the joint, drilling the holes, cutting the sink out. It's kind of a really great help to make sure that uh, it's been pathed right. And then once that's complete, we output the barcode like we do with the saw jet, and then the programming is complete. So thanks for watching this phase. We'll pick this up on the other end when it's time to actually cut and machine the pieces. Thanks for watching.